All right, so my name's David Saw. I'm a professor at the University of San Francisco. I'm also a member of an environmental think tank called Spatial Informatics Group. Uh, we do a bunch of different things, but the one thing that I'm really excited about, it's something called Severe. Uh, raise your hands if you've heard of Severe before. Severe is amazing. Um, what Severe is, right, it's a, it's a partnership between USAID, there, and NASA over here to really bring space-based technology down to the village level for village level decision making. Um, sounds like an easy process, sounds like something that anybody could do. It's not, it's difficult. And um, the place where they're really focusing on, because you can imagine, you can think of all the applications that you guys are actually talking about, where this program is really focused on are things where science, technology, and innovation could actually deal with climate change issues. Um, so, Severe uh, operates in 30 different countries around the world. Um, Severe Africa and Severe Himalaya are up and operational. Um, Severe Mekong is a new one, and that's the one that I'm affiliated with. We got started about a year ago, um, and we're dealing with a variety of different issues, dealing, you know, food security, water resources, natural disasters. You see the list up on the top. And so I'm watching all these uh, presentations you guys are giving, and I'm starting to salivate. It's like, I could use a lot of that information uh, to deal with a lot of the issues that we're working with. And we needed to build this capacity locally. And so the first thing we did in the, in the beginning part of the year is we said, okay, well, what are the issues and what are the contexts that people are, are dealing with? And Severe, like Google Earth, is a um, request-driven system. People come to Severe, they ask for a specific thing, then we support them. So we went through the process of all the th different things we were being requested for. And you could probably imagine um, there was limited capacity, limited capacity in terms of technology, limited capacity in terms of access to information across the board, right? And the same problem that we have here in the US too. Um, data is siloed. You guys all know this better than anybody. People don't share. People within even the same departments over there don't share, let alone between different countries. Um, inconsistent tools. People are taking these tools war for whatever tool they have available to them that somebody got a training on, trying to slam data sets that are inappropriate for that tool by a person who had one week's worth of training to come out with the result that they can try to make a decision on. Completely ineffective. And what ends up happening is you end up having these crazy, inconsistent information products that are used in the decision-making framework that uh, doesn't really inform action. It many times makes those actions more complicated and leads to no impact and sometimes negative impact. So what we're trying to focus on is let's, let's, start, let's start doing some more of the capacity development. That's one of our mandates. But let's not build a generic workshop for everybody. Let's figure out who needs what and how to target that capacity. Next one is data integration. How do we make this data sets more accessible, available, and tool development? How do we get consistent tools in the hands of the right people with appropriate data sets to create that consistent information product that allows us to have informed action and have that proper impact. So, you know, what am I here? What am I looking for? I'm looking for a few things. I'm looking for methods to build remote sensing capacity in an environment that doesn't have the typical access to resources that normal remote sensing groups have. And you guys have been here for the past couple of days. What do you think I'm thinking? It's like, ooh. <laughs> I know what we could do. The other thing is identify, I, we need to, I need to identify actionable data. I need data sets that I could just run with, that I could use, that I could take and put in the hands of a decision maker on the ground where they could actually use it to, to make a better, more informed decision. Whether it's a floodplain map or a fire hazard map or a better land cover map, we need to figure out how to get these, that data set into those people's hands. One other thing that we realized right off the bat was the co-development of tools, the trust factor. We can't come into these environments and just lay down a tool and say, hey, use this, we built it, I have a paper on it. They want to be part of the process. They have to understand how it works. Thank you. <laughs> um, and the last thing, probably the most important thing, and I've heard this talked about all throughout these past couple of days, and this is really, really important when you're talking about um, putting financial transactions on things, is the integration of uncertainty into decision making. Those information products that you, we actually kick out need to have the uncertainty element, uh, not buried in the metadata, go for it, <laughs> not buried in the metadata, thank you, but um, part of the process. Thank you. <laughs>